Welcome to our first video notes of lesson one, guys. I'm so excited. We get to talk about our very earliest ancestors this time, our hunters and gatherers. And it matters because technology led to the expansion and survival of civilization. Now, when we think technology, we should not be thinking iPads and computers and cell phones and my cute little Keurig I got. It's so great, guys. I love it. It is one of my favorite pieces of technology, but that's not the kind of technology we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about anything that makes our life easier. So as we watch, pay attention to the kinds of things that we invent to make our life easier 100, 200,000 years ago. Now, the Paleolithic is our old Stone Age. I want you to write in Actually, we're going to circle here. Circle the word paleo and write underneath that that means old. And lithic means stone. Okay. Now, this is a really hard word for some reason. People forget how to pronounce it. So let's practice a few times. Paleolithic, paleolithic, paleolithic. I know it sounds silly, but practice it. Say it in a big, serious voice. Paleolithic. Say it in a little squeaky voice. Paleolithic. I know, it's annoying. Go annoy your mother with it, it's fine. I give you permission, as long as you can say it correctly and that you know it means the old stone age. And we call it this because people use stones to make weapons and tools like we see here below. Whether it was arrowheads or axes, we use those resources to make tools out of. It ended about 4,500 years before recorded time, before we figured out how to write things down. Please make sure you add this word ended because I think it got left out of your notes. So when I check your notes, I should see that word ended written in. So we're talking about a huge period of time, starting from about 2 million years ago to about 8,000 BC, okay? It's a very, very long period of time. It's most of human history was the Paleolithic. And it began about 2.5 million years ago, lasted until 8,000 BC, like we see on our timeline. Now, surviving in this time was a little bit harder than we saw just trying to find gummy bears in class, okay? To survive in the Paleolithic, you gotta remember that this is before roads or farms or villages. We were nomads, and nomads are people who regularly move from place to place to survive. Can't find food? No use being mad. Ha ha, see what I did there, guys? This Tajik's so funny. Yep, we'll just move to another place. And we lived in bands of 20 to 30 members. So for most of our period, or most of our time during civilization, big cities wouldn't have been a thing. And you definitely wouldn't have had nice cups of coffee like this, okay? You would be surviving however you could, especially by hunting and gathering. So today we got to hunt and gather some gummy bears, or most of the classes did, where we looked around and we looked for our resources as far as we could find them, and we were able to eat whatever we could. Same thing for surviving in the Paleolithic. Say it again. Go annoy your grandma. Go annoy your little brother, as long as you can say it right. And we hunted animals or, you know, it could be anything from woolly mammoth if we lived in cold areas to bears if we were in forests to fish if we were near water. It all depended on where we lived. So, for example, if we lived near the ocean, our shelter and our food would be made of things like palm fronds and we would get fish and other wildlife. But if we lived in a very cold environment, we'd be eating whatever animals we could find in that tundra and we'd use our, use our resources to make shelter. Even our clothing was impacted. So finding food was a job for everyone, but men and women did have different roles. Men were generally the ones who hunted large animals. Based on fossil records, men in the Paleolithic era were generally bigger than women, usually more muscular, um, and so they had more physical strength. 
but they also required intelligence as well because they had to learn how prey behaved. They had to develop tracking methods and tools and weapons to help them hunt. We had to learn how to work together to hunt big animals like a woolly mammoth like we see here. If you could take down a woolly mammoth, you'd be able to feed your tribe for months almost and use all sorts of resources like the bone and skin from it as well but it required you to work together and to know a lot about how the animals thought where they migrated to it takes a lot of knowledge that we don't we certainly don't have today now both men and women did have some shared responsibilities based on what we have found we believe that equal relationships existed in the paleolithic we don't see art or other artifacts left behind that shows that one group was treated with more or less respect. Because everybody had to rely on everyone else to survive, they made decisions that affected the band together and they worked together to find food, but also played to their individual strengths. So women generally stayed close to camp and looked after the children because the women were the ones who were able to carry the uh, babies while they were pregnant and also feed the very young babies uh, because we're mammals and so they were able to nurse men don't have that ability because they had the children um, they also were able to kind of help the children get to work and do things like searching for berries nuts and grains in the area um, the women would also be the ones um, who would work to process the clothing and make things out of all of the resources that um, the men were able to hunt from those large grains. So both genders played a very important role and even children had to make sure that they were participating as much as they could to help everyone survive. It was all hands on deck. Everyone had to work together to survive. Now we also invented tools to help make our lives easier. Now, technology, like I said, isn't just cell phones and all of that. It's any tool or method to perform a task. So it could be in the Paleolithic. Remember, Paleolithic means Stone Age. It could be the, or Old Stone Age, rather. It could be a spear, a bow and arrow, a fish hook, or even the blade of a knife. So here we see a harpoon. We see needles for sewing. We see scraper for scrapers from cleaning animal hides. We see choppers for chopping up wood or skinning animals. So we were able to use all sorts of resources and create all sorts of technology to make hunting and gathering food much easier. So I always love showing this because it shows how Oops, wrong one, there's the eraser. How we were able to take a stone and create an ax or an arrowhead out of it. I definitely wouldn't be able to. We're gonna watch a video in class that shows somebody doing this, but basically you take one large piece of rock and you shape it with other tools, whether it was wood or another stone, very, very carefully flaking away layer after layer until you were left with a very, very sharp object. And flint, I don't know how much you know about flint, but it's still incredibly sharp. It's used as very sharp edges and tools today. So these were very, very efficient weapons and tools. Now, we also had to change and adapt to survive. So Paleolithic people adopted their, adapted rather, their clothes and shelters to the resources of the areas that they lived in. So if you lived in an area, for example, that we see here, where there's some trees and grasslands, you might use the wood that you find to make um, a shelter and you use the grasslands to weave mats and all of that to cover your shelters. But they have to be things that you can easily take down because you're gonna move along. You might use grass or other, you know, turf sod. But my favorites, the ones that I think are just the most ingenious and cool, these are two that are made out of mammoth bones. Now we've found these mammoth bones and then archeologists have reconstructed what these shelters would have looked like. But these would have been in very cold environments where people wouldn't have much wood or rock or stone. You're just kind of in a, almost a, a snowbank or, or just a snow field. 
So you use what's left over from that big mammoth we killed, and we use the bones to make shelters, and we use the skin to cover it in. And I think, you know, it kind of reminds me of something off a of Nightmare Before Christmas, but it also shows how ingenious and how inventive humans can really be. Still a little creepy to be living in a bone house? I don't know. You tell me. Drop me a comment. How would you feel about living in a bone house? Seems a little creepy to me. But if it was that or not survive, I'd be living in the bone house. Now, we also invented things to keep us warm from all that snow and to keep wild animals away. Fire produced warmth, light, and it scared away animals. It kept us safe. Um, so it gave us lots of different things. We first started using lightning strikes and and we observed that when lightning struck it caught things on fire made animals run away and kept warm if you were able to control it so we might at the earliest time use lightning to just kind of start our own fires but eventually we did um, develop technology like flints and um, little uh, things to be able to create uh, flames you might notice if you hit two rocks together, sometimes, occasionally, you'll get sparks. So we were able to create that in order to create our own fire and have control of that. Cooking food also makes it easier to digest, so you don't need as much. You don't have to work as hard to digest it. So it helped our brains get bigger because we were getting more nutrients and we were able to stay healthier out of our food. Now, we also adapted language and art. Now, we know that at some point in human history, language adapted because it's something we have. It makes it easier to hunt together and pass on skills, as well as expressing our thoughts and feelings. And some Paleolithic art we can still see, especially in dry, well-protected caves. It's mostly pictures that show nature and hunting scenes like we see here. Okay, so we see deer here, we see antelope, we even see some scenes of hunting. And so we kind of get the impression, um, or sometimes, you know, we hear the term caveman used, and it's because these paintings were found in caves, so we know humans used it. But the interesting thing is, is that a lot of times we don't see other signs of humans living in those caves for long periods of time. It seems to be mostly places where humans would go and express themselves through art and then leave. And then they might live closer to the mouth of the cave or in other shelters. But caves were usually where animals lived, so it wasn't always safe for humans to live there. But they took the risk anyways to make their art. Sometimes it wasn't even about um, animals. Sometimes humans just want to, want to know that, hey, we're here. So we see these handprints, and it's kind of creepy. It looks a little horror movie-ish. But to me, this tells me this is our earliest human ancestors leaving a mark and saying we were here. Now, we get to a period called the Ice Ages, which were long periods of extreme cold that affected all of Earth. And the most recent Ice Age began about 100,000 years ago. And during this time, we see glaciers, which are big sheets of ice that covered lots of the land. As glaciers grew larver, larger, the sea levels dropped, and there was dry land connecting the continents that was uncovered. We saw a little bit of this in our map work that we did in class. One example of this is right between where we lived in North America and the United States and Asia and Russia. So it's just like the tide going out at the beach, the sea levels dropped, the dry land connecting the continents uncovered, and when it was cold, it's harder to survive. So people migrated to different areas to find those resources, including crossing over those ice bridges. And this lasted about 90,000 years. And our last, eight, our last major ice age ended about 8,000 BC. All right, guys, just a couple last little bit takeaway points here. Remember that the Paleolithic means the Old Stone Age. You should be able to tell that to your aunties. You should be able to tell that to dad. You should be able to tell to your little brother and say Paleolithic the correct way. The Old Stone Age, when humans were migrating around the world looking for food, looking for resources, looking to just survive. We're going to see 
what happens in our next video when that last ice age comes to an end and humans find a new way of finding food, a new way of developing tools that doesn't require us to move as much. Make sure you practice Paleolithic. You should be able to say it. And you should be able to know how we survived. Guess what? The answer is any way we can. All right, guys, have a great day. Make sure you check all your answers and you're reading carefully and you write in all those things that I told you to do. Miss Tadrick out. Love you. Bye.